Hey guys! Bunny! Oh, where'd you go? <laughs> she was right there. It was gonna be this awesome reveal and you left me hanging like... Uh, my exciting intro was kind of smashed, but I'm excited because I'm gonna do a Q&A with my rose breast cockatoo Bondi. Oh my gosh, quit doing that to me. Uh, also known as a galah, so I know that that's a big pet peeve with Australians. They hate that us Americans call these guys cockatoos or rose breast cockatoos. They prefer we call them galahs, but you know, we all say things a little differently based on where we're at. So. Which one do you want to be called? Cocktail or Glaw? She doesn't care. The first question, which I absolutely love, is hearing about fun personality quirks. So, Bonnie Boo, what is your personality quirk? Um, some things just special to Bondi is that when you really get into talking, especially when Dave and I do presentations around and we get very uh, passionate about something and we start talking like we really believe in what we are talking about, she gets really animated and she'll start nodding her head and just getting really into what we're saying. So it makes for a pretty funny presentation. Uh, she's pretty animated, so I like that she does that. The other thing that is in relation to Bondi is even though she's not our messiest bird, she makes the biggest mess on her face. So her cage isn't that bad. I mean, she still destroys toys and makes messes where she can, but it's her face that always looks so messy after she eats anything. Uh, so it's kind of, it, it, in the beginning, I was really worried to put her on camera because I was like, people are just gonna think I don't even take care of her and I never clean her, but I do. It's just every day, she redoes it. She's also the best at petting herself. Definitely a personality quirk with her is she's our most social. So if we are enjoying ourselves on a free flight trip, she's the one that will ditch the skies and get to know the latest free flight student in our group. She just, she's very, very, very social. Uh, you got a pin feather, can I get it? There we go. Another interesting thing about Bondi is that I'm pretty low on the totem pole. If it's just her and me, and I'm the only one that she has to hang out with, then she's like, all right, you're an okay human. Uh, but if there's another option, she's all over it, uh, unless it comes to training. If she's learning something new, if or being trained something, she likes learning from me. I'm like the top choice in that respect. So that I feel cool about, but if we're just gonna hang out, I'm not at the top of the totem pole. I'm not even towards the top. She seems really relaxed right now, but I tried to do a video with her at some point. I forget what it was on. Tried to do a video with her and Dave just came home and she knew that he was in the house and she was just obsessed. And the second I cracked the door open to his office, she flew through the crack just to get to him. Uh, she couldn't focus. She was walking to the end of the table just trying to get close to him. So I'm pretty much chop liver when I made this space for you. Maybe she prefers this way. Okay, this is this is a Bondi quirk. It used to be a bandit thing too. When I take a trash bag or any sort of bag and you like fling it open and make that noise, like whoosh, 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 whoosh. she goes, like, yipe, yipe, yipe. She gets all excited. Should we show them? I think you guys don't know what the heck I'm saying, so I'm gonna demo this. So you stay in the frame so they can see you freak out about it. She flew right to me. Um, her and Bandit, like she started that whole thing anytime. And it's just something that we do on the daily because I go through trash bags obviously. And so when I open them to actually get them to open all the way, I would do that. And she would always be like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then we started making a bigger and bigger deal out of it. And anyway, it's fun. 
We find it fun. <laughs> Blueberry found it nuts. All right, Blueberry's not a fan. Bondi is also notorious for taking showers and just having the funniest hairdos or feather do's. She will take a shower, be really into it, and then by the end, she's just kind of sitting there fluffed with water just dripping down her. I mean, she will get so soaked in a shower. But I won't say that that's just her. Comment too, so are notorious for that as well. But her, her um, feather do's kind of outdo everybody. Did you just switch sides on me? I left you this open space. Um, okay, so I will say this. People get confused about her name. Her name is Bondi. That's how it's pronounced. It's after Bondi Beach in Australia. And we just have a lot of nicknames for our birds. So everybody, whenever we write her name down, they pronounce it Bondi. And we just thought it was funny. So we start calling her Bondi sometimes. And then that turned to Wandy. And it turned to, I think my parents started calling her Bondi Butt. Um, then it turned to Bondi Butt What? Bondi What What Butt? She has a ton of nicknames. So literally, I think Cressy and Bandit would say, hey, Wandy, because we started saying it so much, we would call her Wandy. So she has a lot of names that she responds to. Probably has the most nicknames out of any of our birds, actually. Um, we get asked about harness training a lot. Bondi's the first, uh, maybe not the first. She's, I think, one of the only birds that we harness trained and used a harness on early on before we even knew that free flight existed. We should take her everywhere. It was kind of her that made us love the idea of not using a harness ever again. We don't use harnesses and one, one of the main reasons is because of her and her reaction to taking the harness off for the first time when we had successfully free flight trained her and that was sort of the test to see if it was actually successfully trained. Um, I can't even explain what I saw in her when we took it off, but Dave and I both knew we could never put it back on. So, um, we are not anti-harnesses. So people are usually, but we don't use them uh, anymore. And people are usually really surprised to find out that we ever did. So Bondi is the one that we did and we used to take her everywhere. So um, I love it for that reason of incorporating your bird into your daily life. I just found that it draws so much attention and I am not the type of person that wants to be talked to at every place that I go. Um, I don't want to give a lesson in birds and I don't want to, you know, have everybody petting my bird and asking to do stuff. So I'm not much of the, you just keep hiding behind me, of the attention getter when I'm out and, and about, and we just found that it draws so much attention to just go walk around with your bird on a harness. Free flight. <laughs> That's why you see us in the middle of nowhere. We're like, what's the likelihood that anybody would come by here? <laughs> Slim to none, but they still do. Oh, another fun fact just about Bondi is that she met Shaquille O'Neal. You met Shaquille O'Neal, but he would not hold her. He was too scared. What's the difference between a galah and other cockatoos? Ooh, I think there's a lot of different uh, differences between all the types of cockatoos, but the one thing they have <laughs> uh, in common is that they are, at the very root, a cockatoo. So I love galahs. Uh, they are playful. They are so much fun. They are hilarious. They make me laugh. Like there's so much that I love about them. I love their size. I like that they're more of a medium-sized bird instead of giant um, or teeny tiny. But you're still a cockatoo. You still get psycho. You still, you're still just nuts. Nuts like a cockatoo. So I would say the main differences between cockatoos are how they look. You know, galahs are gray and pink. What are you doing? That is tickling so bad. Oh, that's tickling. She's being super gentle, but wow, that tickled. It like made my skin just. EBGB skin. Ooh! It's like so light that it's. Ugh. All I can think of is what they have in common, to be honest. Uh, they're all psycho nuts. And Gala's no exception. I know this is an odd question, but does she play with your ear when she sits on your shoulder? Do you play with my ear when you sit on my shoulder? 
Ooh, that tickles. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, we could try it. We'll see if she plays with my ear. I don't think she does. It's kind of a Cressy thing. Cressy, oh, you're snuggling in. Cressy will actually rest her uh, beak in my ear. But no, if anything, Bondi will just start like messing with my clothing, uh, preening my really fine peach fuzz on my shoulder. <laughs> TMI, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, she's already totally lost interest. What is her favorite thing to do? Does she like baths? What's her favorite treat? Uh, she definitely prefers pine nuts, but if you're gonna like hand her a whole huge nut, she'll go for that. She's already off my shoulder. She has no interest in my ears. So she loves baths, but not all the time. So I try to offer my birds daily baths and they don't always take me up on it, but I just wanna make sure that I always offer it. Sometimes Bondi kinda looks like she's just tolerating a bath versus really getting into it and enjoying it. Sometimes she'll just sit there and be like, well, this is happening. As far as her favorite thing to do, ah, hmm, hmm. Favorite thing to do is probably socialize. Probably hang out outside uh, with us. My parents' property is on five acres and they have a back porch area patio that's really open and nice and close to the garden. She loves hanging out, you know, out with people in the garden or just outside. She likes getting her cuddles and just going from person to person and making her rounds. I would say that's probably her favorite thing to do. We try to do it on our own in our own front yard, but since it's just the three of us, she doesn't seem as into it. But when my grandma visits and my parents are out, she seems to absolutely love that time with the family. She's a quality timer. You're like me. For those of you that have read The Five Languages of Love, you know where I was going with that. Is Bondi still reinforced by chaos like she was on the cruise ship? Uh, she definitely can be. And it's kind of a combination between chaos and excitement. It's the, the excitement of the chaos. So when people are excited or scared, it kind of resonates the same to her. It's both awesome. So she gets excited by those things for sure. If there's any sort of commotion, She's tickling me. Uh, you just gave me the chills. Uh, she's being so gentle that it's making my skin like tingly. Anyway, I don't know what I said. You distracted me with your tingly skin vibes. Uh, okay, so this one's funny. You're not a cockatoo person, but you love gloss. Is there a difference with gloss? Uh, I think for me, it's just the intimidation factor. I find gloss a lot more playful in nature than the other cockatoos. I find that the white cockatoos go from, this is really fun to everybody's gonna die, real quick. There's not a lot of time in between that and sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference between like we're having a great time to blood is splattering everywhere. So I find with galahs, there's a little bit more time. <laughs> not a lot, um, but there's a little bit more time in between that and they just have more of a natural, playful nature. I find the white cockatoos hilarious. I'll see videos of them, you know, doing certain things that just make me laugh, but also make me be like, okay, what happened after the camera turned off? <laughs> or did they cut this early? Uh, so not that you can't get that with galahs. They're definitely crazy as well. And you know, we've had moments of Bondi. She's flown at people's heads. She's, uh, she's been like walking on the ground, everything's great. And then suddenly she does like this sideways attack to somebody's ankle or something. And it's not, she's latched on attacking it, but you're kind of like, did she, was that intentional? Did she just fly and bite me? I didn't really feel anything, but it was sudden, like what just happened? I feel like the laws leave you in this sense of, what was that? Was that intentional? Did that just happen? Was it me? Was it you? Was it, what was it? Um, whereas with the larger cockatoos, you're gonna know. <laughs> you're gonna know exactly what that intention was. So I would say that's a big difference. Oh, hey. You wanna come answer some questions about Bondi with me? Sure. Okay, sure. she's gonna have like no interest in me now that you are here. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> she loves you. Mm -hmm. No, she does love you. Oh, look, this one. I'm actually interested in Bondi's interactions and relationship with Capri. Maybe you could talk a little about how you guys tackle that. How is Bondi with you? Good, she usually like kisses me on the face sometimes. She kisses you? Yeah. Oh, here, I'm gonna have you sit better. Okay, there we go. Is she always good or does she sometimes, sometimes not that good? Sometimes not that good. Yeah, sometimes not that good. 
Let's keep her away from your face if you don't like that, okay? Go. <laughs> So a lot of it is just kind of reminding Capri not to let Bondi get away with certain things. If she's starting to act bad or if things are going a little sour, if she doesn't want something, you know, it's a lot of avoidance training. So it's a lot of don't let it get to that point. Um, but for the most part, Bondi is pretty good with her and Bondi will usually respond better to Capri than me. So if I'm hanging out with Bondi, all is well. But if Capri comes into the mix, Bondi is like, yes, peace out. I'm going to go hang out with Caprizi. Cause I like her better. Also, she does that with food. <laughs> or whoever has a treat. <laughs> She's like, yeah, whoever has a treat. Oh, here's a good one. Okay, this question says, can you please give some information about their crest since it's so different to other parrots, like when and why it stands up? Do you know why her crest stands up when it does? No. <laughs> when does she normally show her crest? Rock out. Rock <laughs> out when she's excited, when stuff's crazy. And she does handshakes. <laughs> yeah. So what happened just there? You know? Is she being good or bad right now? Bad. Okay, so that was super subtle body language, but she just basically had a little bit of fluff and she said no to Capri's hand being there. And so it's really what happens with Bondi is the dynamic of more than one person. So if it's just me and her, she's really calm, she's really chill. If Capri comes into the situation, she usually just wants to be with Capri. If Dave comes into the situation, oh Lord. Um, <laughs> basically dad. <laughs> she basically wants Dave. Uh, so she switches her loyalty around, but again, I'm at the bottom of the totem pole. So she's more likely to go to them. Uh, I'm not likely to be even on her list. So this is kind of one of the other questions, is who is Bondi's favorite person? You, Dave, or Capri? It's not me. It would probably be Dave or Capri, for sure. The thing about Bondi is in social situations where it's more than just me and Capri and Dave, she chooses the weakest link. So right now she's trying to decide if she wants to go get Capri herself or stay here. So I would say I'm the lowest Capri's somewhere in the middle and Dave is maybe the highest, but Dave and Capri really switch because if Capri's doing a lot of the free flight stuff with Bondi, which she normally does, uh, then she is really the top and she tends to pay a lot more attention, give a lot more treats, focus more on the training. Whereas when we're free flying, we have so many different birds that we tend to not be paying attention as much to which treats Bondi is getting. Capri always makes sure it's her favorites. You know, she wants to be number one out there, so she's paying attention and making sure that she's building towards that. So, yeah, and then when we're in the social situations where my mom is there, if my mom enters into this scenario, now she's at the top and she's Bondi's favorite. If my dad's there, mm, he's probably right below my mom or maybe third. And then if my grandmother is there, she's actually Bondi's new top favorite. And it's because she doesn't really know birds. So she doesn't know when Bondi is about to uh, get a little bit out of control and go for some skin tags or something. <laughs> and she knows that she can just put her head down and get pet instead of getting picked up from my grandmother. So we always have to, uh, we have to get in there because you kind of take advantage of Gigi. You do. And she'll take advantage of people who just don't know birds. She can tell that, you know, you don't know what you're doing and she'll just go onto your shoulder or somewhere where it's harder for you to get her down and she'll just be like, cool, I'm just gonna stay here all day. And most people love it because she's, she's not doing anything bad up there. She's not biting or anything like that. She just wants to hang out. She's very social. So anyways. You know what happens when they get scared? Yeah, jeez! <laughs> <laughs> Me or the bird?